Welcome to this episode of the Plan Disney Podcast, presented by State Farm. Whether you want 24-7 support, access to your policy via the State Farm mobile app, or just to speak to an agent, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I'm your host, Amira Martin, and I've been a Walt Disney World Resort lover since the ripe old age of seven. 33 years later, I'm still in love. <laughs> And you guys, we're on our fifth episode of this podcast series. Can you believe it? Time flies when you're having fun and when you're talking about Disney destinations. Speaking of which, on today's episode, we're going to talk all about resorts. And we're not only going to focus on Walt Disney World, we're also going to talk about Disneyland Resort. Now, there are so many options when it comes to picking a resort for your party, I'm not quite sure how we're gonna get through all of them in one episode, but we're gonna give it a shot. So let's get started. First and foremost, let's introduce our guest today. Hi, Hi. how are you? Good, how are you? So excited that you're here. And this is, look at this view behind us. Oh, it's amazing. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. So wonderful. Now, before we get started, I think we should do some intros. Are you ready, Amy? Would you like to go first? Sure. Yeah. I'm Amy. I'm a first year panelist with Plan Disney and I'm a Disney Vacation Club specialist. I live in Cleveland with my husband and our four children. But my journey with Disney Vacation Club started more than 20 years ago when my parents became Disney Vacation Club members. Oh, okay. And in that time, I've learned so many things along the way and mm -hmm. I've had so many incredible Disney experiences. And I just love that as a panelist, I get to take all those things I've learned and I get to help other people create those experiences for their own family. Oh, that's so wonderful. So fun. All right, Julie, you're up next. Okay. Well, thanks for having us. <laughs> I'm Julie. This is my third year on the panel. Yay! So I started as a Disney World specialist. Okay. Writing in English and Portuguese. Okay. Okay. But now I do both coasts. So I write about Disney World and Disneyland. So in both languages as well. Lucky which girl. It's cool, right? <laughs> Just toggling between the languages. Yes. I have a lot of fun. But for the guests who don't know what we do when we're writing, right? Um, Plan Disney is people like any other guests, right? She's been visiting for a long time. So have I. So what we do is we share our experiences with people who are planning a visit. Right. Right. So let's say you, you don't know when to come or you don't know where to stay. We can help you choose. Exactly. Right. Yes. So, you know, whenever a guest has a question, they can send it to us and we'll find the best answer because we have so many different experiences, you know, among all the panelists. Right. That we'll always find yes, you always a good find answer. Somebody. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So great. Well, I'm so excited that the both of you are here. And I feel like you're my experts when it comes to all the resorts, all the things we need to know. Now, Amy, I know this could be like a really big part of your vacation planning, especially coming to Walt Disney World, is picking the right resort for your party. Can you get us started? Let's start from the beginning. What should we be thinking about right off the bat when we're thinking of what resort we actually want to book for our vacation? Sure. There really are so many things to consider. But mm -hmm. when I pick a resort, I really like to start with location. Okay. I like to look at, you know, my family's interests and the things we're going to do and see if there's any area that really lets us kind of embrace that and be yeah. around that all the time. So, <clears throat> you know, for instance, if you have little kids that are going to want to visit Magic Kingdom multiple times. Mm -hmm. You know, you may want to consider staying at one of the Magic Kingdom resorts. You can, you know, whether you take the monorail or you take the boat, it's just an easy little ride over. Yes. You get there, they can enjoy it. It's easy to get back to your resort in the middle of the day if they need to take a nap or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's just really convenient. Or maybe you're interested in visiting one of the Epcot festivals, you know, whether it's the Food and Wine Festival or Flower and Garden. And actually, right back here, a great place to stay <laughs> is at one of the resorts around Crescent Lake, one of the Epcot resorts, because you can take a quick walking path. It's like a five to 10 minute walk at most. Yeah. You can walk right in through the International Gateway, which puts you right in the middle of the World Showcase, and you're right there to experience experience it. On top of that, you can also take the walkway the other direction and walk to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Love so you kind of get the best of both worlds with that. And there are plenty of other options like that when it comes to choosing a resort. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, it's so fun. The next thing I really like to consider are all the transportation options. Okay. And again, whether you have a favorite method of transportation or there's just one that works better for your accessibility and your needs, that there are plenty of complimentary options to get around Walt Disney World from the resort. Right. You can take a bus, you can take a boat, you can take one of the walking paths. 
Pass. You can take the new Disney Skyliner, Disney's newest transportation. <laughs> you can also, uh, you can take the monorail. Um, you know, for us right now, again, I have two little ones. So we always have a stroller, right. and, like the size of a bus. And so <laughs> I love staying at one of those monorail resorts because we can just roll right in. I don't have to unload the kids or unload our bags or fold our stroller. And it just makes it so easy for us to get around. Right. So those are really things you want to consider. Yeah. Transportation is a really big deal. Uh oh. I know. I was going to say, you're oh, something is really getting you excited over there. Boats. You love the boats? Not everybody loves boats, but I do. Okay. <laughs> and it, it may be a little weird, but I think about boats as attractions. You know, are, what? you're right. You're right. right. You're right. Okay. Are. You know, because. Yeah. You know, sometimes you're waiting for a next lightning lane and you just want to relax a little bit. Yeah. I hop on a boat and I do laps. In the shade. Oh, my goodness. So okay. The way I think about, I loved what you said about location because it really is about choosing a place to be. Right. You yes, know? Absolutely. Whenever we talk about hotels, a lot of people are like, oh, I need a place to sleep. But when Disney designs resorts. Yes. It's all about places to be. Oh, I love that. Yes, I and create too. memories. Right. And enjoy. You know what I yes. mean? Yes. Like, one of the hotels has a savanna. It does. <laughs> it you does. know, like, that's the scale of the experience you can have. So whenever I'm sharing advice with guests, I'm like, okay, there are all kinds of amazing. You just have to find yours. Right. Is it in the monorail? You know, is it near the boats? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you just have to find your style and it's going to be there. It's not just transportation. There's also like the theming of each Absolutely. one as well. Right. So I think Disney does this in their resorts better than just about anybody. <laughs> but, you know, whether it's characters, if you have little ones that are really interested in seeing their favorite characters, mm -hmm. there are certain resorts where you can find characters everywhere. In the rooms, by the pool, everywhere. You know, and then there are other resorts where you'll find those little touches. And sometimes they're almost like hidden touches. Um, but they also really work to use that theming to tell a story of what the resort is all about. Right. You know, and actually my favorite is one that Julie just mentioned, but is Animal Kingdom Lodge. Oh. So, I mean, you, the second you step through the door at Animal Kingdom Lodge, you are instantly transported from Central Florida to the African Savannah. You know, it is beautiful. And I happen to have two three-year-olds who are nuts for The Lion King. Oh. I mean, we, we watch a lot of Lion King. <laughs> and, you know, I love that they walk in. The lobby is beautiful, but then they'll find little touches of Simba and Timon and Pumbaa, mm -hmm. little pieces in their rooms or the hallways. There are animals everywhere roaming the savannah. Yes. You know, there are giraffes, there are zebras, there are flamingos right by the pool, just hanging out. <laughs> um, I really thought, and you know, it really does, it brings that, that story for them that they've seen to life in just a huge way. Absolutely. And I just love that. And I think that those are really important things to consider because they can really bring those special touches in for what's important for your family. Right. And yeah. even if you're not staying there, let's say you're staying at the boardwalk. Okay. Right? Yeah. But you just heard our podcast and you're like, wait, a Savannah, I want to see that. You know, you can walk around the Disney right. you know, property and go find it. So you can take, for example, a boat or a complimentary transportation. You can call a minivan very fast. Right. Yes. That's a, um, an added fee. It's through the Lyft app. Mm -hmm. You know, just hop in a minivan, go see Animal Kingdom, maybe have a meal there, you know, eat at Sanaa. You know, you can spend a few a few hours there That's true. with Absolutely. your little ones, maybe get out of the sun and then you hop back to boardwalk or a park. So that's one of the great things about staying here is that you can see the theming and experience the theming, even if you're not staying at that specific uh, hotel that exactly. night. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great place to just go and explore. We do love to we love to resort hop our family. That's one yeah, of our favorite things too. to do. So being here in the area, just because you're staying at one resort, it is nice that you can actually go around and explore the other ones. That's a good tip, Julie. Really good tip. Yeah. So I think really then the final thing that you're going to want to consider when you okay. pick a room is the actual room type that you need. Right. And there are so many options and so many different resorts offer different things that there's really something for everyone. You know, you'll find lots of standard style hotel rooms, but you'll also find, um, especially if you visit one of the Disney Vacation Club resorts, you'll find the deluxe villas. Mm. Um, so with the villas, you'll find deluxe studios that are sort of like a hotel room about that size okay. with a small in-room kitchenette. But you'll also find the one, two, and three bedroom villas, which are incredible. I mean, it's basically like having your own Disney apartment while you're on vacation. Oh my it's gosh. so cool. Um, these rooms sleep anywhere from four to 12 guests. They have, uh, they have fully equipped kitchens, 
They have dedicated dining spaces. They have an in-room washer and dryer, which if you're traveling with kids on vacation oh my is goodness, yes. incredible. <laughs> and they are just, they are perfect. Um, and the really cool thing is that you don't need to be a Disney Vacation Club member to book any of those rooms. Okay. Those rooms are totally available to anyone to book and to enjoy all the amenities that come along with it. So another great thing you can find if you're really looking for a unique room and a unique experience, there are some really, really, really cool options at certain resorts. Um, like at the Polynesian, you'll find overwater bungalows Ooh. that have their own plunge pool. Uh, the cabins at the Copper Creek Villas at Wilderness Lodge, they have cabins that have fireplaces and private hot tubs, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> the There's treehouse villas at Saratoga Springs. Ooh. And kind of a really unique experience is at Fort Wilderness, you can even camp, whether it's in a tent or you bring your own camper. You can come and camp and enjoy the wilderness along with Disney. So that is so It is cool. really cool. So there, you've talked about a lot so far, but I know there's even more of a benefit. There are a lot of benefits there are. for staying at a resort on property. Can you give us maybe a little rundown of some of the other benefits we could have? Sure. So there are lots of ways you really, you can sprinkle a little extra pixie dust when you stay as a resort guest. Um, <laughs> one way you can really do that is by enjoying extra time in the four theme parks. So there are two ways to do that. Okay. So with early theme park entry, resort guests can visit any of the four Walt Disney World theme parks up to 30 minutes early each day. Okay. All you need is valid admission and a Disney park pass reservation and you'll be able to walk right in. Gotcha. Which is really cool. Um, and 30 minutes might not seem like it's a lot of time to get something done but you really can get a lot done in that time period. Mm -hmm. um, we were here in the fall with my big kids and we took them to Disney's Hollywood Studios early and we were able to ride Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror all before the park opened in that 30 minutes. Like, it was crazy. So it was awesome. The other extended hours benefit is the extended evening theme park hours, which is available for deluxe guests okay. and guesting at deluxe resorts, which includes all the Disney Vacation Club resorts. And with this benefit, these guests on at select parks on certain nights, mm -hmm. you can hang out in the theme park up to two hours after the theme park closes for the night. Whoa. Which is, yeah, it's super cool. You know, it's just, so if the park closes at eight o'clock, you and a few of your deluxe resort neighbors can hang out till 10 o'clock, ride rides, eat snacks. It's a great time for like, Disney photo pass photos, with okay. small crowds in the background. It's a really, really cool benefit. The next thing resort guests can do is that they also have access to booking individual lightning lane selections, they can make those selections early. Okay. So these guests can begin booking those reservations beginning at 7 a.m. Um, and guests can also get early access for special event tickets when they purchase those tickets. So for instance, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is coming back this mm -hmm. year. And when tickets went on sale a few weeks ago, those guests could buy their tickets before the general public. So that yeah, so that's cool. really cool. Yeah. Um, and probably my favorite perk of staying at a Disney resort when it comes to those is dining reservations. So every, you know, you yes. love to eat when you're on I'm vacation. I'm a foodie too. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, while all guests can make dining reservations 60 days in advance. Okay. Okay. If you're staying at a Disney resort, you'll be able to make your reservations 60 days from the date of check-in for your entire length of stay up to a 10-day stay. Okay. So if you are checking in on the first yes. and staying for 10 days, right. you would be able to book those reservations for the first through the 10th all at one time. Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a great way to grab, especially like hard to get tables or, you know, meals that fill up really fast. You definitely have an opportunity that to do those. So awesome. It's cool. I love that. I, I kind of have to chime in here okay. because that is really a game changer. Like she said, some tables are hard to they get. Are. Yes, absolutely, they, they are. are. You know, you can really create unique memories that you probably wouldn't be able to do if you tried to book that table later on. Every little benefit is an opportunity for a memory. It is, absolutely. Yeah. This is so great. You're, okay, you're getting me pumped up. I'm really excited. <laughs> All of the benefits. Now, I feel like we've only touched the surface though. There's so many other things that we haven't talked about. Now, you mentioned dining reservations, but there's also quick service options too. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that works, sure. especially when you're staying at a resort? Absolutely, there are just tons of dining options. There really is just about anything you can imagine. Right. You know, so with the quick service options, it's something, you know, whether it's like a quick service experience like uh, Gasparilla Island Grill at the Grand mm -hmm. Floridian, mm -hmm. or like the fantastic food court at Coronado Springs. You know, you can pop in, you can grab a meal from your family on the go. It's easy. There's no reservations. Right. Um, one of the things I love, I have a very, very, very picky eater among 
<laughs> my children. And, um, you know, we can always find something that he will eat. Right. You know, always. There's always options for him. But there are also dishes that cater to a slightly more adult palate. Right. You know, and I love that quick service restaurants resorts really think about the entire family. The other thing I think is really cool about the quick service meals is that it's a great place to pick up like really special treats. Um, right. yes. You know, it's not people think, oh, treats in the parks. And those are great. But quick service has a lot of those options, too. So whether you're going to stop by the Mara at Animal Kingdom Lodge okay. and pick up the, like the world famous zebra domes, yes. which are mm. so good. <laughs> or, you know, you can grab one of the 50th anniversary cupcakes or during the holidays, they'll have holiday treats out and they're perfect. You know, you can take them to the pool to enjoy. You can go back to your room like it's just it's the perfect way to, to get a little taste of that. Yes. You know. With every opportunity. It is. You can even use mobile order for that. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, you're, you're a big fan of the mobile ordering. Yes, I know. I am. Yeah. I only do mobile ordering these, okay. these days. Oh, boy. And it's it's really simple. So you, you choose what you want to eat in the app, and you pay. And you also select uh, a time for you to pick up your food. Okay. So, like, okay, this this queue is like 30 minutes. They, they're going to be out. and Okay, so you can plan ahead. Now, this is all in the Disney World app. So yes. there's a little spot, I guess, for the yes. okay. You tap on the the plus at the bottom, got it, and you go to order food. Okay. And the Disneyland app is the same. Like this, the experience is very similar. Okay, so you great. can do it on both coasts. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, whenever you choose your window, you just go to the restaurant, and then there's a little button that lets them know you're there. So you tap, I'm here, and then they cook your food. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's so, hot and ready. Exactly. Yep. So I call it a win-win-win. Okay. <laughs> Triple win. <laughs> Triple win. Love it. So like mobile ordering for the win. Okay. I agree. Another great thing about mobile ordering is if it's a really busy time, like if you know you're going to eat at noon, you can place that order first thing in the morning and select your spot. You know, because if you wait until noon, especially during busy times of year, you may get there and you can't eat your food until four o'clock right. at your favorite restaurant. <laughs> so if your family knows what they're going to have or if you have a favorite restaurant that you're going to be stopping at, mm -hmm. it's a great way to get in there and order your food early. And then it's ready when you need to eat. That's so, so smart. Yeah. That's very true. It's convenient. A lot of planning and scheduling, even for quick service. Right. That's really yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. But like another thing that's cool to remember, though, is that the resorts, like they have different dining options. Yes. Some of them have like quick service and table service and character dining. Yes. Right. But some of the table service experiences, even though they're not character dining, they're super themed. Yes. You know, like the Whispering Canyon Cafe mm -hmm. at Wilderness Lodge. Yes. It's a themed experience, but doesn't have any characters, but you meet pretty interesting people yeah. there. Okay, so I have yeah. to tell you. So Whispering Canyon Cafe is one of our family's favorite oh, restaurants okay. when we come to Walt Disney World. <laughs> um, you know, so it's it's got this, you know, it's woodsy. It's kind of almost got a Western theme. You know, it's pretty laid back, which is great for my family. Um, <laughs> and it's it's got these giant skillets. The food is fantastic. Um, so it's all you care to enjoy, family style dining, which again is great. But what really makes it fun are all the kind of shenanigans that go along with your meal. <laughs> I love that word. Um, it's, it's a really fun word to <laughs> it's say. It's a good word. It's a good word. On top of all of those benefits, we haven't even touched on like the recreational activities yeah. that are available at the resorts. Can you kind of share how we can wrap those into our schedule, into our vacation, and some of the fun things that we can do? Sure. So like Julie mentioned, Disney resorts really are a place to be. They're right. not a place to sleep. And a big part of that, I think, is because there are so many recreation options and so many activities for you to do. You could do an entire resort visit and not get through everything there is to do. Yeah. Um, you know, my my kids' first priority on any list when it comes to a resort is the pools. Okay. That's always the first thing that, where's the pool? What's it like? So, um, you know, <laughs> Disney resort pools are heated year round and they have so many fun things. You know, in the feature pools, you'll find whether it's slides or splash pads or like, um, like Tiki Tiki's at the Polynesian is like an entire giant water playground. Like it's so fun, um, but you'll also find quiet pools. So whether adults want to go relax without rambunctious kids, or if you have, you know, tiny little ones that are a little intimidated by some of the bigger features, yes. the, those are, those are available as well. And I, so my favorite pool though, without a doubt okay. is right behind us oh, back how here. Oh, convenient. It is very convenient, <laughs> is, uh, is Storm Along Bay at Disney's Yacht Club. And I mean, this thing is, first of all, it's gigantic. Yes. It is this massive pool. Um, it has this huge pirate ship slide that goes over the walkway to Epcot. It's got uh, a sand bottom floor, so you feel like you're walking through the ocean. Mm -hmm. It's got lazy rivers. It's got like sun decks 
to sit and just hang out on. Yeah. You can even rent cabanas while you're there. Oh. And on one end, it even has a, a very shallow, sandy area with like pails and buckets. So little ones can dig and That's roll around so in the fun. sand. And yeah, it really is. It's it's the perfect spot to spend a day. I love that. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so in addition to the pools, there are also you'll find bike rentals at many resorts. You okay. can also res you can also rent um, equipment. So to play basketball or to play tennis, those types of things. Um, the resorts all have movies under the stars. So these usually take place at their either out by the pool or on one of the lawns at the resort. And they'll show Disney movies at night. Um, many of them have campfires at the same time. Oh, fun. Yeah, absolutely. You can buy s'mores kits. You can roast marshmallows and make s'mores while you sit out there. Um, but one of my favorite activities to do is if you happen to be staying at a resort that has a community hall, okay. which are the Disney Vacation Club resorts, many of those have that, um, you definitely have to go inside and check it out. There are arts and crafts, there are games, some of them have video games. Again, there are equipment rentals, DVD rentals, just about everything you can think of. Mm -hmm. And there are so many fun things to do. And one of the really cool things is that you don't need to be a Disney Vacation Club member to take advantage of those. You just need to be a guest staying at that resort. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. So the last time we were here, and it's one of my kids' favorite things to do, is they love making a Mickey tie-dye t-shirt which is so fun. It's messy, which is right up their alley. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's a small fee, but it just it makes the perfect souvenir. Right. Because not only is it fun to take home, but you didn't buy it. You made it. Yeah. And you made it at Disney, which is way cooler than something else. Yeah. So, you know, those are a lot of fun. So, Amy, what should we be on the lookout for when we are staying at a resort? Anything fun? Well, one thing you definitely will want to be keep your eyes peeled for is that you might even find characters wandering <sighs> at different places throughout your resort. Oh my goodness. They're in different locations all the time. Another great activity mm -hmm. at the resort is there are scavenger hunts. Okay. And you can, it's a great way, especially on a rainy day, mm -hmm. pass a little bit of time. And all you need to do is stop at the front desk and ask and they can give you all the details. That is so cool. Yeah, it's awesome. We've talked about so many things. Like my brain is just swimming of all the things that I think, especially my family would like to do when we come back and stay at a resort. But we, we talked a lot about food, but I don't think we talked enough about food. So we're going to get down to this. We're going to actually talk to an executive chef and learn everything there is to know about creating these amazing menus at these wonderful places of dining here at the resorts. Chef Christine, we are so excited that you're here with us today. And I know by the end of this, you're going to make me hungry. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, are you up for a fun Q&A? Yep. All right. Great. All right. First and foremost, I'd love to know a little bit more about who you are. So tell us about who you are, what you do, and your big role here at Walt Disney World. Yeah, well, I think you can tell already I'm German. <laughs> so I'm born and raised in Germany. But I started actually my Disney career in Disneyland Paris. I was part okay. of the opening in Disneyland Paris. And then we came back over here, and now I'm over 25 years with the company here. Oh so my gosh. together, 28. And I've been um, the executive chef of Epcot. I've been in catering. I've worked for the Disney Cruise Line and also spent some time as the executive chef in Disneyland, California. Yes. And that's what I said before. Disney gives you the opportunity. You, we have so many choices in food offerings and service styles. You as a chef can do the same. You can work in catering. You can work on the cruise ships and travel through the ranks and be diversified. And so much. Like I said before, build a family as yes. well. So we yeah. have two children and uh, they're older. And now they're challenging me as well still <laughs> to be um, on top of my game. But what I like is that um, I learned cooking in the smaller kitchen in Europe. And I always said I learned the management style here in America, okay. always Disneyland Paris. And in today's world, to be a chef, you need both. Right. You know, it's like the musician. I always said the musician never forgets how to play his instrument. Exactly. So my new role here now is I'm one of three Resort culinary directors. Okay. And I oversee eight resorts. And these resorts, we're doing talent planning, strategies, menu strategies, and definitely going with the menus. We have over 500 dining locations, and we definitely can provide the guests with a lot of choices from food trucks uh, and signature dining, table service locations, and, and more. And more. Yes, and more. so many options. And yeah. I love that that's a big part of your job. So when creating menus for adults and children, what are a few of your priorities? Yeah, so many variety is always important. Mm -hmm. uh, and so seasonality. And also I also look at cooking techniques okay. and equipments and uh, presenting it in a little bit modern way. 
So that's also very important. Yeah. Oh, wow. So much to think about. So much to think about. Absolutely. It. Okay. So can you tell me how Walt Disney World chefs accommodate guests with food allergies? There should always reach out for an allergy trained cast okay. member. We have that in each areas and that's probably the right way to do it. And then they're in good hands and we will all take care of. Oh my best. goodness. So kind of like a concierge yes. for food allergies. That's yeah. wonderful. Okay. Another question. Now, I know this is like picking a child. I'll admit it. But do you have a favorite dish currently being served on property? This is really like picking a child, <laughs> right? And the favorite dish currently on property. So I always like the, the shrimp and grits. In, I have them in Car um, Caribbean Beach mm -hmm. and we have it in um, the Art of Animation. Art of Animation, we also recently launched the naan bread with the tandoori chicken. Mm. Then you have, the, of course, we have ethnic restaurants in other areas. Yes. And I really like the plant-based frittata we just recently offered in some of our breakfast locations as well. So wow. Again, lots of choices, lots of diversity, and that's just a few to name. So it's hard to pick just it one. It is. It's hard to pick Cannot just pick one. one. I know. I'm so sorry. And I know you're a mom. So that is like picking a child. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. So another hard one. I know. Do you have a favorite restaurant? That's another hard one. <laughs> I do like uh, Se Sebastian's Bistro right now. Okay. If you want to have some little uh, diversity and uh, little it's family style service. I love to sit at Geyser and just have a bison burger mm. and enjoy the atmosphere in a nice setting. Yes. Have a glass of wine or beer or a mocktail. And you really don't think that you are in Walt Disney World right. anymore. You think somewhere you're in the mountains. Yes. And you can go everywhere. We have um, Topolinos. We have rooftop bars and restaurants. Mm -hmm. So for every taste, for every time of the day where you want to be, you have offerings. Oh my goodness. I love that we have options and offerings yeah. and just places to rest and also enjoy a good meal. So let's have a little fun. Sweets or cheeses? That's an easy one. <laughs> Cheese and charcuterie. Oh, okay. Love it, love it. Love oh, it. so you're a charcuterie person. Cheese and charcuterie. I can always have it in the house too. It's always there. We have it on property in some of our areas. Mm -hmm. Again, Wilderness Lodge definitely has it. And you can always have a glass of wine with it. Yes, too. that's true. That's yeah. true. Okay, last question. Favorite meal of the day at a Disney hotel? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? For me? Yes, for you. Dinner. Okay. The reason oh. why is so I can have a glass of champagne. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ending the day on a sweet note. Exactly. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Christine, thank you so much for being here. This was so yeah, much fun. And I loved learning everything about what you do. And thank you for what you do. Thank you. Okay. Well, as I suspected, I'm now super hungry. Now that we've seen that interview and heard Chef Christine <laughs> talk about all those delectable things. But there's so much more that we have to talk about now. We haven't even talked about Disneyland Resort Hotels. Yeah, I think it's time that we dig into your home away from home and talk about some of the benefits that are, we can have there when we go to stay at a resort. Let's fly to the other oh coast. Oh my gosh, okay, let's go. So, Julie, I have to tell you though, I have not been to Disneyland since I was like 15 years old. Wow. And my family has never been, we are dying to go. Okay. So I'm gonna be furiously taking notes and I'm gonna have plenty of questions for you. So I need all the guidance on what we can look for. I'm gonna take you there. Perfect. Okay, I'll start with my favorite hotel. That's the Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa. Okay. 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 It's luxurious, but it's also cozy, crafty, imaginary. I love it. <laughs> great pools, great dining, a lot of details to discover. So that's my jam. Okay. But if you're like massive classic Disney fan, yes. then you should consider doing the Disneyland Hotel. Oh my goodness. That's the original one. Okay. Quintessential Walt Disney, the original dream. It has like Disney memorabilia and photos and special rooms. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> and then there's the novelty, yes. which is Disney Paradise Pier Hotel. Okay. This hotel is getting reimagined as a Pixar hotel. <gasps> oh my gosh. That's cool. How fun. It seems like, so if you're friends with Miguel, Andy, Sully, <laughs> that's the place to be so in great. the future because it's, it's in process. But right now, they have a direct pathway to California Adventure. Okay. Which is really cool if you intend to visit that park. So if you visit now, there are a lot of benefits you can get there too. But, you know, 
I always like to preface, as somebody who has visited World, when I'm talking to people who have been to World, the Disneyland Resort is much smaller. Okay. As cute, as incredible, but smaller. Yes. <laughs> so, a lot less walking. A lo- exactly. Sure. Everything's walking distance. Right. Right? So even if you stay, you know, at any of these hotels, you're walking distance from the parks, which is fantastic. But there's slight differences in how you get by. So if you're at the Grand Californian, there's a direct pathway into California Adventure. And there's also a direct pathway into the downtown Disney district. Okay. So if you're going shopping or dining, it's right there at your doorstep. But you can also get the monorail if you're at the Disneyland Hotel. Okay. Which is like the original Disney monorail. Okay, so tell me, I've heard this. Tell me if this is true. Does Mm -hmm. the monorail at Disneyland, does it actually drop you off inside the park? Uh Uh-huh. That's so cool. (laughs) (laughs) cool. And there's another cool thing now with with Genie Plus because... If you're, you get you get out of the Disneyland Hotel and then you go into the monorail station, you will actually scan your ticket at the station. Oh. Okay. So you hop on the monorail and then you can, you know, buy Genie Plus on the monorail, select your lightning lane, even before you get to the park. And then you're that just ready to go when you get there. Brilliant. Exactly. That's awesome. So you hit the ground having fun, which is really cool as well. That's so awesome. Mm-hmm. But... You know, monorails are cool, direct pathways are nice, but (laughs) but there's something else about the Disneyland Hotel that everybody raves about. You may have heard about it, but I don't want to spoil it for anyone. So listeners, if you don't want spoilers about the Disneyland Hotel rooms, you speed ahead two minutes. (laughs) Oh no, I'm all, give me all the spoilers. spoilers. Or cover your ears, okay. Yeah, you guys cover your ears, we're going to listen. Okay, (laughs) so uh, the Disneyland Hotel has magic Headrooms. I've seen this. Right. Have you? Okay. Pictures. Pictures? Yes. Okay. Did you hear the sound? No. Did you? I heard the sound. See, okay. Not only they have magical headboards with secret fireworks hidden in the wood, but they play a sound as like a kid music box. And it's wish upon a when you wish upon a star. Oh my god. That's cool. So it's like quintessential Disney, magical headboards, when you wish you want to star. It's like the blue fairy is there. <laughs> it's everything. Everything. So spoilers are over. Okay, yes. But, you know, that's a huge perk of That was a good one. You know, it's really special and very unique. Yes, uh, it is. Experience. Yeah. I spoke about the rooms inside. Yes. What about outside? Okay. Right? The views. Uh, now that's important. The views. So Disney's Grand Californian has fantastic views of California Adventure. Okay. Not all rooms, but some. Right. And you can see Pixar Pier, which is beautiful on itself. Yes. At night, wonderful. <laughs> and that's where World of Color happens. Oh, okay. On select nights. And that's a beautiful show, like masterpiece in storytelling. So you can watch it from your balcony in your jammies. Oh my oh, that's goodness. Awesome. That's my kind of show. Yes. Right? So yeah. that's like a perfect ending for the perfect Disney day. Absolutely. But if you're into like fancy rooms, okay. you know, if you're planning a very special trip. Yes. That hotel also has signature suites. Okay. And they're very unique rooms. They have four different design styles. All right. So you can even like tailor it to your family, which that's is cool. interesting. Yeah. yeah. And guests who stay there have personalized service. It's a very upscale experience. Right. So depending on what you want from your trip, that's also another great option in terms of selecting rooms and special views and special touches. Wow. I love that. That's really cool about it, too. That's great. Okay. So we talked about the views. And you told me about the monorail, which is so, so cool, going right into the park. What other kinds of extras are there at the resorts? Okay. You can see characters walking around. Like you say, you can bump into Mickey. I bumped into Jasmine once. Okay, I've, I've never seen Princess Jasmine. See? I've, seen, I've, been, I've never seen her at the resort. Right, at a resort, like, So yeah. that's very, very cool. That's I'll give awesome. You that. Like, yeah. just turning a corner, there she is, royalty. <laughs> it was really cool. So there's Jasmine. Okay. 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 Um, what else? Oh, if you're there until August this year... You can take ukulele lessons at the Disneyland Disneyland Hotel. Oh my That's god! Yeah. And also, you can learn about the hula 
Okay. Which is cool too. Yeah. So it's it's a nice experience if you're there. It's only up until August though. Okay. So it really depends on when you're visiting. But that's very unique and that's happening uh, close to Trader Sam's by the pool. All right. So that's another experience that you can have at the Disneyland Resort right now. That's cool. Okay, so now we have this at Walt Disney World, and so maybe you do too at Disneyland. Okay. Um, so when you walk into the lobby, you'll find these big activity boards mm -hmm. that tell you all the activities that are going on and when and where throughout your stay. Okay. And it's super useful because those offerings change all the time. Yeah. So you can find out exactly like the Layla lessons and the hula. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it's great whether you go through and you snap a picture, when you first get there right. or you just stop by during your visit. And those make a really, really useful way to figure out what's going on. And I love that you brought that up because that's a great plan B just in yes. case your plan A has to, you know, adjust. Right. Sometimes it rains. Sometimes somebody doesn't feel like going to the park. So you can pull that up and find something at your resort that fits your family at that moment. So that's awesome. That's, that's a perfect. great tip. Now, we talked about the activity board is a great thing to bring up, but are there any other maybe lobby extras that we can expect when we visit Disneyland? I think so, because, you know, the lobbies here are also incredible. Mm -hmm. Animal Kingdom Lodge is a masterpiece, right? <laughs> and it has a little cousin at the Disneyland Resort. And it's the Grand Californian lobby. It's incredible. Yes. So you can often find a pianist there and they're playing Disney tunes Aww. and sometimes... You know? Yeah, that's, that's so beautiful. That's so sweet to arrive at your hotel and just listen to that. It's relaxing. It's yes. great. Sometimes they take, you know, requests from guests, which oh, is beautiful. That's nice. And they also have seasonal installations, like for the holidays. I was just there for May the 4th. Ooh, Star Wars. Yes. Star Wars. Yeah. Woo -woo. <laughs> and my husband loves Star Wars, so we spent a lot of time looking at that installation and taking the details in. And that's incredible i just love that actually that's another reason i like staying at the disneyland hotels because in my case i usually fly in late on thursday nights that's my gym my routine yes and i like checking in online yes because then i can go straight to my room right you know at any of the hotels and that's super helpful if you're tired you know you just want to get to their cozy room uh, so I really love that feature. And I think it's also available here. It is. It's available at Walt Disney World as well. And I love it because there's nothing better than, you know, getting off a flight, turning on your phone and getting that notification that your room is ready. It's yes. like your vacation has already started. Yes. Um, and then, you know, you head to the hotel, you open up the app, you can unlock your door right from the app. You don't have to visit the front desk. It's perfect. It is perfect. Although the cast members are lovely late They're at night. They're wonderful. But, you know, we can take that one step out when we're really tired. Right. When you're, ready, like you're just ready to go. You right. know, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's so perfect. Now, Julie, you've told us all the exciting things that we can do. So we got walkways and we've got monorails and we've got things to do right at our resort. But what if I just want to relax? <laughs> I'm a relaxation girl. What can I do to just really pamper myself maybe a little bit? Maybe I don't want to do the park for the whole day, but I want to do something special just for me. I got you, girl. Okay. <laughs> I think we're the same. Because, you know, uh, I was there in January. Okay. And then I was really tired because it was a long trip. Right. My feet were killing me. Oh. Killing me. And it was our last day. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to take a spa break in the middle of a park day. There's a that spa. It's such a good idea. There's a spa. Oh, my gosh. At... Disney's Grand California. Okay. Okay. So, and it's right by the park. Oh, okay. Because that hotel is right by the park. Gotcha. So you can really go back and forth in the middle of a park day. What's the name of the spa? Because I'm going to need to know the name. I have to book. Okay. It's called <laughs> the Tanaya Stone Spa. Okay. Tanaya Stone Spa. And it's at Disney's Grand Californian Hotel. Gotcha. It's so lovely. It's It was just redesigned. Beautiful. Oh. Relaxing. Inspiring. It was the best time, and they, the little scrub they used was Mickey-shaped. So I, I really wanted the scrub, but I also didn't want to mess up the Mickey shape. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, it worked out. <laughs> it was fantastic. And then I just left the spa, and I was back into the park to enjoy the afternoon. Oh, my okay, goodness. I have to put that on my must-do list. Yes. I was going to say, that has to happen Oh my goodness. when I visit Disneyland. That's awesome. Right? I, yeah. I just loved it. It was such a cool experience for me. So, yeah, Tanaya Stone Spa is the way to go. Gotcha. Okay. So... We need to not forget that there are great dining areas for us to just enjoy, but also I feel like there are some character dining special events or places that we can go to kind of 
intertwined meeting characters as well as having a great experience, a great dining experience at Disneyland. Absolutely. Okay. There's so much. Okay. So for example, if you want to meet like Mickey, you can go to Storytellers Cafe okay. at Disney's Grand Californian as well. So last time I was there, I took my mother-in-law for breakfast. Yes. So she got to hug Mickey and Minnie before she got to the park. That's that perfect. That was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> that was really yeah. cool. But let's say your kids are into Goofy. So there's also Goofy's Kitchen at the Disneyland Hotel, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. The atmosphere is so upbeat. Like, it's perfect. It's, it feels like a party. Oh, that's fun. Right. So that's amazing. So depending on where you're staying, you can find the most convenient meal or depending on the characters you love. Gotcha. There's also an, an incredible experience at Napa Rose. I'll talk more about that later. Mm. Uh, it's a breakfast with the princesses. Okay. Okay. And it's kind of upscale dining for kids. Oh, it's so cute. Like it, the little desserts and with the princesses around. It's such an exquisite moment. And it's at Disney's Grand Californian too. Okay. Okay. So Napa Rose in the mornings, it's for princesses and breakfast. But in the evenings, they become a super signature dining experience. Ah, cool. And that's a huge experience there. It's so quintessentially Californian. Yes. <laughs> it's called Napa Rose, first of all, uh, after a tradition that the um, wineries have, and they plant a rose at the end of the vine. Oh, oh. I didn't know that. Isn't it cool? Oh, that was yeah. cool. And that's why the restaurant is called Napa Rose. And the menu is seasonal. Okay. Californian cuisine. And it's paired with Californian wines. So some things will change. And you can talk to the cast members and ask, hey, what's new for this season? And right. they're always happy to share. Of course. So Napa Rose is exquisite in the mornings and in the evenings. <laughs> oh, I love that. Now, I know there's one thing. You mentioned Disneyland Hotel. But there's another special type of event, type of experience around the pool area, I hear. And it's even hard to qualify. It's kind of an yes. event, kind of an experience, kind of a character meal, but it doesn't have like classic characters. So it's Trader Sam's, mm -hmm. it's right by the pool. It's hard to describe without spoilers, but the bar's kind of alive. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it responds to you. Oh, so it's kind of a role playing experience in a way. Okay. So depending on the, the drink you order, something may happen. Depending on how you interact with the cast members, something may happen. Oh. So if you're that type of person, that adventurous spirit, that's me. You should definitely try. <laughs> yeah, then so Trader Sam's is your place. It's waiting for you right by the pool at the Disneyland Hotel. Oh, I love that it's right by the pool too. So I feel like we've covered so much. And I think you, we, we may have covered everything that you... Well, not the pools, oh, girl. Not the oh, pools. Yeah, that's the important Not the right. pools. Yeah. Okay. We need to know all about the pools. Yeah. Amy did her part with Walt Disney World. Yeah, no, you know, it's time. When she's coming, I want her kids right. to have some fun by the pool. Okay. Tell us about the pools. Okay. So all hotels have incredible pools. <laughs> the Disneyland Hotel has a monorail theme slide which is super cool, super like classic Disney style. Yes. The Grand Californian also has relaxing pools, slides, a lot of offerings around the pool. Mm -hmm. And what those hotels have in common is that you can book cabanas at both. You know, like if you have kids that love the pool, if you're planning a pool day, getting a cabana could be genius. Yes. Yeah, they're you're, awesome. You know, you're right there. There's shade. If you want to take a nap, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a base camp by the pool. Right. Which is fantastic. So those two hotels offer the cabanas by the pool. Uh -huh. And then uh, Paradise Pier has something very unique at their pool. It's a rooftop pool. That is so cool. cool. Okay, so nice. even the pools are amazing. Mm -hmm. On both coasts, mm -hmm. I feel like we've covered so much so far. And you know what? We've covered so much, but we haven't even discussed anything about the beach resorts. So like Hilton Head Resort or Vero Beach or even Alani. So... I feel like we're just going to have to do a whole nother yeah. episode about we that. We need another yes. one for yes. sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I know there's there's like resources for us to kind of check those out, even though we didn't get to it. There's something that we can look up online, right? There is. So there really is so much to know about resorts, whether it's the beach resorts, whether it's Disneyland, whether it's Disney World. And we've made it really easy for you to figure out with our planned Disney Pocket Guides. Yes, I love yeah, the Pocket absolutely. Guides. absolutely. So, you know, these have... All the details about all the resorts, including the beach resorts. You can find details about accommodations, dining, activities, and even a few insider tips. And 
you know, you can use them before your vacation to help you pick a resort. Right. Or you can also download the PDF and bring it along with you to use while you're staying. So that's awesome. So those are available on our Play and Disney Instagram account, as well as Disney Parks blog. Perfect. This was so great, but sadly, it's almost time to go. I know. Are you sad? Yes. Sad. You're going to be leaving me. And we had such a great time. <laughs> I miss you already. Oh, I know. But wait, you're not leaving just yet. Okay. I think I think it's time for a lightning round. Are you ready? Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. OK, so how this works is I'm going to ask you a series of questions. I need the very first answer that pops into your head. All right. Right off the bat. Don't overthink it. We're going to go in alphabetical order. So, Amy, you will be first. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. OK, here we go. <sighs> Favorite resort? Um, the Polynesian, because I like to stop at Pineapple Lanai for a little bit. Oh, I love that. Yes. OK. OK. Disney World, Animal Kingdom, Disneyland, Grand Californian. And I'll throw in a bonus one, which is my all time favorite, Alani. You cheated a little bit, but I'll mm -hmm. take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. OK, ready? Favorite recreational activity at a resort? Ooh, I like roasting s'mores and then stopping for movies under the stars. Oh, I yeah. love that. You stole mine. Oh boy. Movies under the stars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, something you must do at your Disney resort. Ooh, uh, if you're staying at one of those resorts, DVC resorts that have a community hall, mm -hmm. you have to go in and check out all the activities that are going on. That's always my favorite. Okay. Plan a resort day. It's a yes. place to I be. Know. Yeah. Oh gosh, you're getting me with that. Yes, plan a resort day. I love that. Okay, favorite snack to take back to your resort room? Uh, Dole Whip from Pineapple Night. Like that's always okay. the answer for me. Dole Whip will always be my answer. <laughs> <laughs> cupcake, cupcake. Amy, What's a cupcake? cupcake. Okay. Yeah, no. for breakfast the following day. Oh know, breakfast boy, cupcakes I love are the best it. Cupcakes. Okay. All right. Next question. Favorite resort pool. Ooh, I should say the Polynesian for the Dole Whip, but I think I'm going to say Storm Along Bay at Disney's Yacht and Beach Club. Okay. Okay, then I'll go with the Polynesian. <laughs> it's the Lava Pool. Brilliant. Oh, okay. Two good answers. Love it. All right, last one. Favorite room view from a resort? Ooh, I like the theme park view rooms from uh, Bay Lake Tower at the Contemporary. Ooh, yeah, okay, you can watch yeah, the fireworks. It's awesome. Okay. Okay, so fireworks view from the Polynesian with the people I love. Oh, that's my jam. That's you getting me right in my heart. I love that. All good answers. Perfect. Thank you guys so oh, much. Thank you. thank you guys for tuning into this episode of the Plan Disney podcast. You can check out a new episode every third Wednesday of the month. And if you're enjoying this podcast, be sure to leave us a review. In the meantime, if you're looking for more planning tips and insights, be sure to follow Plan Disney Panel on Instagram and Plan Disney over on Twitter. If you have a question of your own, go ahead and head over to plandisney.com and ask it there. The panelists would love to answer it for you. To keep up on the latest news, be sure to stop by Disney Parks blog. Now, we talked about so much. I think I'm ready to plan a whole resort day during our next vacation. You've equipped me. I thank you so much for that. And we also want to give a big thank you to Chef Christine. Big thank you to our panelists for all of their great information. And a huge thank you to our sponsor, State Farm. Now, next month when we come back, we're going to be setting sail on the Disney Wish. So that's right. You're going to be coming along with us and we're going to talk about all the things cruisers can look forward to when they set sail on the newest ship aboard the Disney Cruise Line. We'll see you then.